You're on Real Talk for Real Life with your host, April Michelle. And today, I would like to speak to you about relationships. We know that there are several different types of relationships. We have husband and wife, mother and father. We have um, daughter and son, friends and family. I mean, there's so many different relationships that we can count on so many different hands and toes but the most important relationship in our walk in life is our relationship with God now God created relationships through human beings through husbands and wives in the book of Genesis when Adam and Eve were um, created in the garden and when Adam was there and he had relationships with the animals, God gave him dominion and authority over the garden. He named the animals. He was the caretaker for that, for the Eden, for garden, for the garden of Eden. This is the relationship that God had with Adam. He entrusted him with the thing that he had created. But then God also saw that there was a need that, Adam or man, it wasn't good for them to be alone. So he created woman through uh, the surgery of removing a rib from Adam's side and he created woman and the two became one and they walked together and they talked together. They had relations with one another and this was a great harmony between God, man I mean, it was just beautiful. They communed with God. They communed with each other. And it was just a beautiful, beautiful thing. But of course, we know sin disrupted that that relationship because of disobedience and because of blaming. And it was just so many different things. So, of course, that caused a rift between them and their relationship. But God still wanted a relationship with man, so he found a way through Christ to reconcile man back to himself. So, but even in all that, there have their life was continuing. Life was happening. Marriages were being uh, put together and people were having children and their children were having children. And of course you had sons and daughters, sisters and brothers, you know, so it was so many different things. So, And um, the scriptures, it talks about when a man in relationship to being married, that there is a covenant that happens between that man and that woman. And in Genesis 2, 18, it says, Then the Lord God said, It is good, not good for that man should be alone. I will make him a helper. And I just talked about that as far as him creating. But then also, we also know that when um, that man, that woman was created from that man, they became one. It became a cycle of that when that son or that daughter uh, met someone, they would leave their mothers and fathers homes and they become one with that husband and that wife. It says, um, so there's the relationship between that husband and wife that um, that no one can come between. Then you have the relationship of parents and children. It, and it says, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord, your God, is giving you. It is important that this relationship And this commandment, honestly, is honored because a lot of times people want to make the excuse because my mother did this or my father wasn't there that I should not honor them. But it never, the word never tells you or gave you out to say that because your parents didn't do what they were supposed to do, you're not to honor them. See, they gave you life. God gave them a responsibility. Every man is responsible for their own soul salvation. 
you're responsible. We are responsible all together to honor God's word. God has given us a commandment. He says, honor your father and your mother. It didn't say honor them only if they do right by you, if they feed you, if they close you, if they train you right. It didn't say that. It says honor. It just is a blanket statement. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. We have a responsibility as children. And of course, parents have responsibilities to, to their children, but God is going to deal with them. But we can't worry about what our parents do. We have to, as children, we have to do what God has told us to do according to our parents. You know, we, and then in Leviticus, it says, in Leviticus 19 and 3, it says, Every one of you should or shall revere his mother and his father, and you shall keep your Sabbath. And I am the Lord your God. So it's it's like basically telling you what we are to do. We are to honor them. We are supposed to reverence them, respect them. You know, we we are the heritage of our parents. He says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the wound of reward. So it is not a curse that you've been born. You actually are a heritage. You are a gift. So, you know, when we as as children, we have the responsibility to honor our parents, and our parents have a responsibility to train us up the way we need to go. But God has given us a commandment, and that's to honor. That relationship has to be intact, and we have to we have to understand that we can't change people. It doesn't matter whether they're parents, whether it's your husband, your wife. You have a responsibility to do your part, and then there's a relationship that um we should all know. Is the family of God. You know, being a part of the family of God is like people don't realize the most that's the most important one of the most important factors in just living. Um, yes, there's a a, a foundation. You know, you have your parents and your mother and father, your sisters and your brothers. But once you, you know, it, and and that, that's a, that's your starting ground because it trains you how to be around people, how to respect people, how to live with people. And in the body of Christ, the family of God, we have to learn how to live with our brothers and sisters, how to respect them, how to love them, you know. And 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 and, and the one thing I can't honestly I can't stand is when we say you're like family. Ugh. <laughs> Either your family or you're not. It's not your like family. I know that like is it always puts that well, you're not blood, but you're yeah, you're okay. No, we are blood. Doesn't matter whether you're my natural family, but you're my spiritual family, and we are blood, and that's through the body, blood of Christ. We are blood. We are connected. So when I I'm born into my natural family, yes. Those are my blood relatives through the genes, through DNA, through that natural uh, connection. But there's also the spiritual connection that I have with my brothers and sisters who are not my natural uh, brothers and sisters, but they're my spiritual brothers, brothers and sisters. And that relationship is just as important as my natural. And we have to understand that there's no distinction. You're not like family. You are family. That relationship has to be um, just as strong as any relationship because it is one of the most important relationships because that's what connects us to God. You know, it, it, it's it's imperative. Um, it's imperative that we speak positive things over each other. Um, in Corinthians, um, the second Corinthians five seventeen and 18 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who thou, through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So beautiful. This connection. Of relationship, 
So if, when we become a new creature in Christ, we have the same ability to reconcile others unto us, like Christ reconciled us back to him. We have that same power. That's a beautiful thing. Re- reconcil- reconciliation of relationship. Beautiful. Just beautiful. And in John 3 and 3, it says, Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Very important. You have to be born again. And this is, is of the water and of the spirit. But you, you know, he said, you, can't, you cannot honestly know who I am unless you, you serve me and, or worship me in spirit and in truth. You cannot really know who I am unless you are part of this body, a part of this relationship. And the um the next one is the new name and joint heirs with Christ. Oh man, that that relationship. See, the relationship with our brothers and sisters in the body of Christ is one. But then the other relationship is just me and Jesus, you and Jesus. We are joint heirs with Christ. I mean, how many people do you know in the natural? If you if you uh, are part of a a family, if you're adopted, sometimes you're on the outskirts. Sometimes they don't recognize you as part of being the family because you're not blood related. And it makes you feel unwanted. And it makes you get, has that unsettling feeling that, you know, no one is going to really reckon, uh, recognize you as being uh, a part of the family because I don't look like you or my blood is not like yours. But in Christ, it doesn't matter. He said, once you decide to take his name, you are a joint heir with him. You have been joint with him. And in, and in Hosea 2, 21 and 23, it says, And in that day I will answer, declares the Lord, I will answer the heavens, and they shall answer the earth, and the earth shall answer the grain, the wine, and the oil, and they shall answer Jerel, God will sell, sell. Well, excuse me, God will sow. I will sow her for myself in the land. I will have mercy on no mercy, and I will say to not my people, You are my people, and he shall say, You are my God. So basically, God, this is in the Old Testament. See, the word of God is a witness unto itself. So you have to understand that. Even though a lot of us deal with the old, the New Testament a lot, the the New Testament laid the foundation. I mean, excuse me, the Old Testament laid the foundation of to what was to happen, and it gave us an understanding of what was to come. And so, in the Old Testament, it is letting us know about this reconcil reconciliation, about this joint heirs with Christ, even though it's not saying Christ, it says the Lord. So we know that God in the flesh, God, you know, that Jesus, he was born in this flesh, but he was, uh, he was God in the flesh. So it, it's important for us to understand that, um, that, that God w- was setting up foundation from the very beginning. Um, in Romans eight sixteen through 17, it says the spirit itself beareth witness with one spirit, that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may also glorify together. Beautiful, beautiful. So the the spirit itself bears witness with one spirit, which is the which is, which is God. You know. Even though um, I know people say, oh, there's, you know, God, God, the, the Father, God, um, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, but they are one. These are, this is like, I am a sister, I'm an aunt, and uh, I'm a daughter, but I'm one person. So the same, it's the same concept. And, and sometimes I don't understand how people are just so, well, it was three gods. No, 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 no. It's one God with three person out, three, three per, um, persons, three identities, three things that he, he does. He's the father. 
He's a son and he's the Holy Spirit, but they are all one. These, you know, when I'm with my mother, when she was alive, I'm a daughter. There's certain things that I do as a daughter. And, um, but I, that I would not do if I was, uh, say this to say, if I was at work or a coworker, you know, I wouldn't, my attitude about work wouldn't be the same attitude that I would represent in front of my mom. Same way with my nephews and my nieces is I'll treat them like an aunt as opposed to treating them like a daughter, like, you know, like I'm, I would in front of my mom. It's so different. My attitude, my relationship is different. And so that's how God is with us. He, he, he is what he needs to be for us in whatever capacity it is that we need him for. If he need, if we need a father, that's who he is. If we need him to be our brother, which is son, that's what he's going to, if he, if he need the, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, which is a teacher and a guide, that's what he's going to be. So, but he's all these things in one. And it's so important for us to understand that. So in James 2 and 5, it says, Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? So if you love him and you serve him, you're going to reign with him. This is basically, he's given us a promise. He's He's not, he's not, you know, taking away uh, his promises. He's actually reiterating it and letting us know that because we chose him, because we love him, because we are willing to serve him, that we have a place with him. And I am so grateful this being in uh, these relationships. So like I said, there are so many different relationships, but the Bible deals with um, these three, the four actually main relationships with which is husband and wife with parents and children uh, and with the the church, the body of Christ, which is um, you and the people of Christ, the, the your sisters and brothers, and then you on a personal level with Christ. So um, it is imperative. These relationships are so important. Uh, it makes you. Um, you don't, you can't make it without them. Uh, a lot of times people think that they can live this life without, uh, um, Christ and you can't, I said, we, everything that you touch, everything that you, uh, live and breathe is, is connected to God. I said, God has allowed certain things, but honestly, we, we have a responsibility in our relationships to honor what God has given us. He's given us mothers and fathers to honor. He's given husbands and wives to submit to, to love and respect. He has given our brothers and sisters in Christ to uh, see them as not like, but to be a family, a family of, of believers, not your like family, but you are family. And then that we have a relationship with God, with Christ that, it's a personal thing. It's between us, he and I. Uh, we walk it together like Enoch walked with him. And he walked and translated him into, that was the first, if you ask me, that was the first resurrection of a human being. Going in, he he um, lived on this earth 65 years and conceived, had married, had children. But 300 of those years, he walked earnestly and respectfully and un you know just very loyal to God for 300 years and God translated him into the heavens with him that's a beautiful thing relationship is important it's a beautiful beautiful part of life if you are willing to do it I honor the relationships I have with my brothers, uh, my natural brothers, and my mom, um, and my grandparents, and even my father. Um, when my uh, brother passed away early on this year in, in March, 
very devastating. I talked about it in one of my segments of, um, you know, the five stages of grief and five stages of grace. And it was hard to talk about it because um, I had to deal with what I was dealing with, what I was feeling, and it, it wasn't easy. And um, today, um, in this month, it has made uh, five months since he has transitioned. And, you know, I didn't think I would even um, feel this way. I, I didn't think that I would be still missing him, but I am. And I didn't think that I would still cry for him, but I am. And even though I've accepted his his transition, it still hurts. And that relationship with my brother is not dead. It's just not there. It's I can only remember the relationship we had. We don't have an I don't have a living relationship. I have memories of a relationship. And I think that that's what's tearing me up and making me feel some kind of way. And then even with my mom missing her, it's been 30 years missing her. And even though it's been 30 years, the pain is still real. And I'm realizing that, you know, you still live, uh, you you go through those five stages honestly and sometimes you repeat them but there but you may not repeat them like you would in the very beginning so i'm in the accept i'm in the acceptance stage of the five stages but that acceptance stage can can continue to go on and on and on and then there'll be a part of me of denial every so often Cause it's it's like I when I'm remembering what was and now I'm I, t- I can't believe that they're gone you know it's but it's not as potent as it was in the very beginning. Relationships are important. If you have a relationship, a good relationship with your parents, cherish it. If you have good relationships with your brothers and sisters, honor it. If you don't, with either one of these, you need to reconcile, like how Christ did the people, the ones who, his people, us, when we rejected him, and we were we were ready to crucify him, and when we spat on him, he still reconciled us back to himself. We have an opportunity to do that. We have an opportunity to be better than you know, what the enemy has um, counted us out to be. We have an opportunity to reconcile our brothers and sisters back to uh, our lives, our natural brothers and sisters, as well as our spiritual brothers and sisters. We have to remember that relationships is very important to God because he he died for a relationship. He died for a relationship. He died for a relationship. It wasn't something that, you know, oh, you know, just something to do. He, it's an honor. It was honorable for him to die for us because he loved us. The relationship with us and God is a life and death situation. I'm so grateful that he died for our relationship. I'm grateful. Because I have an opportunity to come to him boldly and freely and and say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I love you. Lord, I want to be a part of your life. You know, I want to be where you are, God. And that's what's important. So thank you, Lord, for allowing me to have the opportunity to have relationship with you so that I can be a better me for with my parents or be a better a me for my brothers and sisters naturally as well as spiritually and be a better me for you thank you lord for giving me that opportunity because if if he hadn't died i wouldn't live and that's the real tragedy that would be the real tragedy well i'm your host 
April Michelle, and you've been on Real Talk for Real Life. Peace.